Okay, so here's another question that you may see in the CAPM chapter of your intro to finance class, either for high school, a graduate type of studies, like, you know, undergrad or graduate studies or anything that relates to some intro to finance stuff, even your CFA. Hopefully this gives you an insight on how to solve a complex missing variables type of CAPM question. The first thing I need you to do is have your formula sheet open, right? You wanna know, okay, what formula you need to use when solving these problems. That's honestly probably the easiest part, but yet the part that students don't do. There's only one formula that you need for CAPM. Use it, okay? That's exactly the formula we're gonna use here. Let's get through it together. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna read the question. You're gonna see how I identify information when I was studying for this course and how I got top mark studying for the course. And I also teach this to my students all the time. Take step by step, identify the information, look for the missing variable, and you'll be able to do this in seconds, okay? So Hakone Inc., I guess we're gonna change colors to yellow. Hakone Inc. has a beta of 1.1. While its required rate of return remains to be 12.5%. It's interesting. On the other hand, SANI LTD, so SANI Limited, has a beta of 1.28. Okay. What is the required rate of return on SANI's limited stock if we know that the risk free rate of return trends towards 2.5%? Okay. So you know me. We've identified everything within the formula, and we're going to do that. One step further, we're going to actually attribute variables to them, just such that we know exactly what we're looking at. In this case, we could say that the beta of Hakone is equal to 1.10. So we're going to call it VH. Okay. And we know that the required rate of return on Hakone stock, okay, so we're going to call it KH, is equal to 12.5%. Awesome stuff. Okay, cool. We also know that the beta of SANI is going to be 1.28%. I mean, 1.28, sorry about that. No percentages. Don't want to get you confused. And then we're asking you, hey, what is the required rate of return for SANI, okay, if we know that the risk-free rate of return is equal to 2.5%, okay? So we got a lot of information. Okay, but we also don't have all the information out there. Now, of course, I know that because I've done these questions again and again and again. But there's actually a quick and easy trick that you could use to identify all of the parameters you have right now that are useful and all the parameters that you're missing. Okay, and it's simple and it's as simple, and I'm telling you, as using your formula sheet. Now, on the right, we notice right here that we have our CAPM formula for the SML. It's literally written in front of us. So we're going to do it. What we're going to do is we're going to write that at the top of our sheets here, such that we have the formula right in front of us. We could kind of identify the missing pieces and the pieces that we have. So under CAPM, there's really one formula that we care about, and it's going to be the one of the SML. Okay, that's the one that we care about, and it can be written as K is equal to the risk-free rate plus beta times return on the market minus the risk free rate. Okay, that's in other words called the risk premium. Now, in this case, I think we could all agree that there are two stocks that we're looking at. Okay, there are two different companies that we're looking at and we want the required rate of return of one specific company. Okay, that's very important. So we're gonna write kind of like our mission here and we're highlighted in red which is this right here. We want to find the required rate of return on SANI's stock. This is our mission, okay? And we know that we have two stocks. We have stock Hakone, which we're going to call stock A, and we have stock SANI, which is stock B. Of course, we're more interested in stock SANI, okay? So now that we have all of this information, we're going to actually just highlight the stuff that we know we have onto this little formula. In this case, we know that we already have, right, the beta of Hakone. So we could highlight this as being yellow. We have that already. We also have the required rate of return of Hakone, which is pretty awesome. We're going to use a different color just to be kind of like comprehensive. But for B, right, for SANI, we also know that we have its beta. So we're going to put it in green. But that's pretty much all that we have. Another thing that we have as well is the risk-free rate of return, which we know is 2.5%. 
okay? Two and a half percent. So already here, we notice that we're missing something pretty important. We're missing the ERM, the market risk premium, okay? But we have everything else for Hakone stock, right? We have everything else for our CAPM formula. So once again, when you do these questions, you want to be like some sort of problem solver. You want to be like a detective. You want to be like Dora, <laughs> all jokes aside. But you really always want to identify the missing pieces of the puzzle. Because even without doing this step, if you were to solve for the, the required rate of return of SANI, which is going to be KS, you would not have all the tools you would need. Because you would have for sure the risk-free rate. You would have the beta. But you wouldn't have the return on the market. Okay. And because of that, you would be granted nothing. You, would, you wouldn't know what to do. It'd be too complicated. So in other words, what we could do is we could take a step back and we could actually use the information we have on Hakone's stock to solve for this missing piece of the puzzle, ERM, and then plug it in within our formula for Sani's required rate of return. It's as easy as that. So let's go about doing this. So we know, and I guess we'll use a random color. I don't know. We'll go, yeah, we'll go with green, whatever. If we want to compute, right, we know that K is the KH, which is Hakone, is equal to the risk free rate plus beta of Hakone times ERM minus RF. And what's awesome is that we have all of this information. So we know that 12.5% is equal to. 2.5% plus, uh, what was their beta again? 1.1 times x minus 2.5%. So then it becomes easy. All that you have to do is solve for x. In other words, solve for the risk free rate. And I'm going to plug that in within my little equation solver because you know what? This is the first time I've ever done this question. So I actually don't even know what the answers are. So we're going to go about that. Just give me one little sec. I'm going to find our inputs. And it should be correct. Let me just do a quick sense check. So we have 12 and a half is equal to 2.5 plus 1.1 times x minus 2.5. I feel like my dyslexia is not taking the best of me just yet. OK, so let's solve for x. In this case, it seems if we want to round up just a little bit, and by the way, this is ERM. Sorry about that. If we want to say what our missing variable is, so our ERM, we would notice that ERM should be 11.59, or we could do it like this, percent. Okay. So let me just highlight once again our ERM. That's what we're solving for. That's our X. And now we have that. Thanks to this, we are able to jump to the last step, which is solve for the required rate of return on Sani Limited's, Limited's stock. We're going to use purple for it. Why not? It's easy now. So we know that the required rate of return on Sani stock is equal to the risk-free rate plus beta of Sani times the risk premium. And now we're super stoked because we know it's super, it's very easy. So KS is going to be equal to two and a half percent plus 1.28, 28 is a pretty cool number, times this number here, percent, minus the RF. Because I don't have a lot of space, I'm just going to omit writing it because I'm a lazy person. But you shouldn't do that on your exam. Although it may be multiple choices, so it may not be that much of a problem if you just kind of skip some steps there. So we're going to plug everything in. So once again, you would have 2.5% plus 1.28, which is the beta of SANI, times the market risk premium. The market risk premium will be 11.5909% minus 2.5%. And that's going to give you AKS, a required rate of return of 14.13. Okay, If you want to round it up, 14.13. I guess I'll give you all the decimal points just because why not? Percent. And that would be your final answer. Okay? That's your final answer. That would be the required rate of return on Sandy stock. And I guess I'll be cute and I'll write it on the side right here. 
such that people, when they review this, including yourself, will know what the answer is. Because I know a lot of students don't want to watch all the videos, which is fair. I mean, I'm annoying. I speak a lot and I make weird jokes. So totally get that. So I'm just going to highlight stuff from other questions as well. Okay, awesome. So this is how you solve a very straightforward question as well, although it may not seem as straightforward if it's the first time you're doing it. This is something that you may see on an exam. It has been on past exams, and that's why I'm giving you the exposure on how to solve it efficiently and quickly, hopefully. So once again, if you need more content, go through my YouTube, go through my website, or just search for Isma Helps online, and you're going to find a bunch of past PDFs, past problems, and you know, hopefully this helps you out. This is all for free. I want to make sure that students, especially business students, can actually learn in a human way, learn in a way that's simple and fun, and that's actually versatile, because we all learn in literally different ways. So this is just my attempt to kind of facilitate that process. That said, good luck. Enjoy the video, or I hope you enjoyed the video.